Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Well, I was able to get a beta version of Luminar AI. I'd like to thank Lena over at Skylum Software for getting me this copy. Now, I've only been using it for like 15 or 20 minutes, so I haven't really delved too deeply into it. But I thought I'd do this uh, video to just give you a glimpse of the software and to show you a couple things that I've been fiddling around with so far. Now my plan is that this Wednesday, October 28th, I'll do another more in-depth video on Luminar AI. If there's anything you want me to demo or to show, uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to do it in that video. Now, one thing they did tell me and they asked me to make sure everyone is aware of that this is a beta version of the software. So, uh, Cosmetically, some things may change, some things might be moved around or added or subtracted from the software. Also, um, as we go, I'll mention some things they said to mention. For example, uh, let's talk about templates. There's been a lot, about, a lot of talk about the template system that this software uses. It's an option. You don't have to use templates. You could just come in and edit an image the way you always have, or you could use templates. Let's go to templates first. Um, have this image here. Let's say I just want to use a template for it. So we could go over here and click on templates. And then over at the top, it has a number of different sets of templates. And what Luminar AI does is it examines the elements in an image. So it knows when you have like a beach scene compared to a portrait, compared to maybe a lifestyle image. And it will uh, recommend to you different um, types of templates specific to that image. Now, in this case here, it analyzed the scene. It, it realizes it has a person in it, right? So for this photo, it could do uh, these analog image or analog, analog templates. It has six different uh, templates there. Or you could do easy portraits, it's saying. It has five there. And then it says black and white, and it has five there. Now, they did mention that this is still being developed refined and improved. There's going to be more templates added and it may make a suggestion in the beta release that isn't really applicable to the scene. In this case, it seems to be fine. It's recommended the correct templates. Now, if you don't like any of these, you don't have to use them. You don't have to use the templates at all. You could jump right over to edit and it has all the normal uh, adjustments that it typically has and you could just start editing the image, you know, the way you want. Or, like I said, you could use a template. And you don't have to take the template uh, as is. You could just apply the template, then jump over to the edit and start editing. For example, um, I don't care, let's say, for any of these that it's recommending. So I could jump down and go to other sets. I could do a landscape set if I want to, or a landscape template on this. And then we have a group of portrait ones here. But I kind of like this experimental. So we'll go there. And you could try different... Oh, of the different uh, versions or different looks here of the template. I could go to like burn film. I could do this celebrate. I could do this cold frame. Color ramp. Glow. Don't care for that one, tell you the truth. Uh, feather light. But let's say I kind of like this celebrate. So I like that, but maybe I want to change. Maybe it's a little too saturated for me. Well, I could apply it. I could jump over to edit. And you can see whatever adjustments that template used will be highlighted compared to the others. So it did some light adjustment, it did some detail adjustment, and so on. So I could come in and maybe just go to those adjustments. Here it did mood and so on. I could just do those adjustments. It did face and skin because it knows there's a person in there. But I could dial those down if I want, or up, higher, or in my case, I'll just go to color and I'll take some saturation out. I just don't want it as saturated, right? So you could come in and readjust a template or adjust it more to your liking. So that's kind of the template thing, right? Another feature I want to show you is this new iris feature that is in this uh, software. We'll open up this image here, and I'm not going to use a template for this. I already did do a couple minor things uh, to the image. I went to color and I just added a little saturation and I went to details and I added some sharpening and a little bit of large detail just to make it a little sharper. But what I want to show you is this new iris enhance feature. Uh, this I think will come in handy for me 
because I found whenever I photograph a model with dark brown eyes, it's pretty much impossible to get any detail in their eyes, as you could see here. What you could do is you could go to the portrait panel, go to the face section, and then you go down here to eyes, right? And you can see the section right here, iris. You could substitute the iris of a person's eyes. So I want to keep her eyes brown. I just want detail in them. So we'll go to the drop down and I'll go to brown and watch her eyes. You could see how it added detail to her eyes. Now you could, if that's too much or too little, you could take iris visibility and turn it up to give it a little more you know, visibility or bring it down to give it less. Now I like it kind of high. And also you could add iris flare. Uh, that's a new feature. And iris flare is like a, just a reflection on the bottom of the eye. So you could take that and turn that up and you could see how it's adding that iris flare to her eyes as well. And then it has the other adjustments that were in Luminar 4, like in large eyes, eye whitener, eye whitening, I should say, eye enhancer. You want to enhance it even further with that and so on. So you could go through and do that. And then you could do your normal processing that you want. You might want to go down here and whiten your teeth a little bit, excuse me, something like that. So you could come in and do the normal portrait processing from that point on. I want to stress though, the, you don't have to keep the eyes the same color. For example, if I want to give her blue eyes, I give her blue eyes. If I want to give her green eyes, I give her green eyes. I mean, I could come down here. What's cat eyes? Well, that's kind of creepy. Uh, but I could give her hazel eyes, let's say. And then I, of course, could bring iris visibility down because so it looks a little more natural and stuff like that. So you could come in and you could change the color of a person's eyes if you want to. But I thought that's a great feature because, again, I found when I photograph people with brown eyes, particularly darker brown eyes, it's almost impossible to get any detail. So I'm really going to love that. I could just keep their eyes the same color because I'm probably never going to change someone's uh, eye color unless they ask me to, uh, but I'll come in and give them some nice detail in their brown eyes. Now, another thing I'll show you is, again, you could just forego the templates. I just wanted to show you a landscape image really uh, very quickly. So I have this image here. It's an unprocessed RAW file. You can see there's file information down here. It's a Sony RAW file. Not processed at all. Don't have to use a template, but if I wanted to, I could go there and it would give me recommendations, storm chasers, easy landscapes, and so on but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to jump right to edit and I could go then to the essentials panel and I could just edit this the way I normally would edit an image. I'd go to light and I'd probably bring highlights down a little bit. I'd open up shadows a lot. I'd uh, get a white point, make that a little brighter, blacks down a little bit. I'd maybe add a little contrast. So I could just jump around, do it as I normally would. I could add some saturation. I'm not going to process the entire thing. You get the idea. Now, once I'm done processing, if this is the way I almost always process a landscape image like this, I could create my own template down here. Click on this little thing here. I could uh, save it as a template. Then down the line, when I have a similar image, I could click on templates. And what it will do is at the top for this photo, it will, rec it will recognize, first of all, that there's a lot of sky, there's water, there's maybe a lighthouse in the image. It will recognize that and it will recommend my own template for editing. So again, you could see how that would save you a lot of time in your processing. So that's it. That's uh, just a glimpse of Luminar AI. I realize I didn't get into depth at all, but again, I've only been using it um, 15, 20, 25 minutes now, right? So again, in the comments below, let me know what you'd like to see demoed, and I'll try to do that this Wednesday, October 28th. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.